Carmen thing where she was helping them along their way. Stanley Zakrowski in 1912 at 16, and then Stell Zakrowski at 1913 was 23. All of them were taken care of by Tilly. Okay, so it's not looking... It's not, it's not looking great. She just wanted to help them. She wanted to help them. <laughs> Myers went missing after 1923, who was apparently a boyfriend of Tilly's. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nellie's first husband, Wushik Strummer, oh. uh, had gotten sick in okay. 1918. Dorothy Spira was a granddaughter. Not Dorothea. She- she had gotten sick. I know, I wanted to do Dortea. Sophie Sturmer, who was a daughter of Nellie, Ben Sturmer, both of them had died in 1917. No explanation. They were both twins. And they had probably spent some time with good old Tilly. Well, they had spent a lot of time with Tilly and Nellie. John Sturmer, Nellie's son, had recovered, but he thought his mother had poisoned him. So initially when we were talking about her significant others, husbands and boyfriends and stuff, being the the target, that in a way kind of made sense to me because I was like, okay, there's, there's a lot of killers that target their significant others. Right. But for her to not only target them, but now also her family, it makes me wonder... Well, this is during. It makes me wonder what, like, the motive was. And it... It puts me in a place where I'm like, did she just really enjoy the killing? After I'm through this list, I promise you, I will give you a reason. Yeah, solid. I'm ready. (laughs) There's a lot of different people that didn't die, obviously, in the care of Tilly and or Nellie. But before I get to that, Lillian Sturmer, the daughter of Nellie, had stayed at Tilly's for a year when she was 13. She had gotten deathly ill when she had stayed with Tilly. I'm very surprised. Are you surprised? Everyone's surprised. I mean, I don't know how that could have happened. (laughs) She got sick, supposedly, from food poisoning. Was it oatmeal? (laughs) (laughs) She recovered eventually, and until her death had suffered heart problems, which obviously happens when you ingest poison. Yep. (sighs) Wow. Rose Split, Stel Grantowski, and or... Kuskowski, it, once again, is listed kind of weirdly. Mm-hmm. Nick Miko and Bessie Kupsisik, all of them had recovered, but had eaten oh. meals at Tilly's house. Wow. Yes. Wow, she just went after everybody. She went after everyone. That's crazy. A lot of her neighbors had reported also becoming ill after they had gotten into a fight. Uh, And it even resulted in one of the neighbor's dogs suddenly getting ill. Oh, fuck right off. he had barked too many times. Did the dog live? No. (gasps) Oh, sweet baby. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing at your face. Because, you know, you know how it is. It was the animals. They didn't do anything. They're just well, he animals. Barked, I mean, apparently he barked too much, and she was mad at that. Maybe he barked because there was a fucking psycho bitch next door <laughs> fucking poisoning everybody. Maybe dog wasn't super into that. So while her last husband, Joe, was in the hospital, Tilly had actually admitted to putting a, quote, white powder on his food. Quote, the trial was quite a circus. Three grave diggers and a lady undertaker had repeatedly kept the audience in stitches. The judge frequently had to remind the giggling onlookers that the court was not a theater. Oh, that's that's very uh, that's very interesting. Right. Why did people think it was so funny? Apparently these people were making mirth of, of the whole situation. But it was the prosecutor's side. I don't know. I don't feel like that's like a super funny thing. Ugh. Tilly, when Joe was in the hospital prior to her arrest, had actually said, quote, if Joe gives you any trouble, hit him over the head with a two-by-four. She is very affectionate, that yeah, one. clearly. She eventually got a life sentence in prison, which was pretty abrupt for a woman in this particular I was going to say, yeah. I mean, for a lady killer, I feel like they always typically went pretty, uh, pretty soft on them. And it was only for Frank's death. They didn't bother to 
Do you think that they went harder for the sentence on Frank's death because they didn't know if they could fully convict her for all of the other potential attacks? See, the thing is, they didn't bother after they had gotten her for that. It's grouped in with her, yeah. but it's not something that's on record as why she was convicted. Do you feel like that sentence was a reflection of what they knew that she had done to all of the other people as well? No, because murder is still murder. They were pursuing the death penalty, which in this point in time in Cook County, they hadn't hanged a or, lady yet. Yes. Nellie was actually released about a year. Her trial was drawn out and they weren't able to actually convict her and they prosecuted as sentence served. The thing that I think is kind of funny is that she was under the stipulation that she would never cook for any of the other inmates. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously that's where problems come in. Even as she was being sentenced, had said the netherworld defied the mortals to send her to the death and that she wouldn't be hanged or sentenced to death. And the prosecutors obviously obliged and made the first foretelling that she had ever made an actual truth because they didn't hang her. They didn't execute her. She just died in prison. A lot of different newspapers had noted the way that she looked. They had said that she was quote squats and had spoke only broken English, even though she was only, obviously she was in the United States the entire day. Yeah. She came as like a baby. Right. Weird. But maybe that's because of the community that she grew up in. I mean, maybe, that's one of their thought processes and how she got such a harsh sentence oh. while she was in there is that she was not attractive and a lot more of the women that were tried for oh, crimes. Oh, this is her? Okay. Oh, and then swipe. Oh, okay. A lot more of the women that were tried for crimes. That's were, a lovely pilgrim hat she's wearing. <laughs> were... Better looking and more charismatic. And the ones that were acquitted, obviously, were those women and not her. She's a terrible person, obviously, killing humans. But also, when her cousin Nellie was in jail, she would visit her cell and tell Nellie that she would be taken out and hanged on a fairly regular basis. And convincing her that she would definitely be killed the next day. I will say this, though. I'm loving that coat. That was a really good story. Why? Hey, Ty, I have a surprise for you. Oh, <gasps> the reveal! <laughs> it's a can of something. So, Ty. Yeah. What is it? What do we do? Beguile me. Beguile you with this fucking oatmeal stout! Did you see the name of the brewery? <gasps> it's made by Beguile Brewing. Is it good? It is. It's, I like it. So there's actually no possible way that you could have known this. We live on a plane, you and I, where I think that we're just connected by coincidence all the time when we do the show. I was already planning on drinking a beer for my story tonight, but you provided me one and told me to beguile you, which also goes along with my story because my story tonight's going to be a little bit different than the other paranormal ones that we've done. Okay. It's based more in folklore and myth. Okay. Which I, I'm very excited about, and I got very nerdy. And I'm also very excited to now be drinking beer for it because it's German. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about the Black Forest in Germany. Are you... How familiar are you? Slightly, but not very much, so. One of the girls that I had gone to high school with, she had come from there, and one of her biggest contributions to the class that she and I were in together was a Black Forest cake. <gasps> but then had told us... Schwarzwald Kirschtorte? It was TV Pro. Uh-huh. She recorded how she made hers. I would like to put this out there for you and anybody else that's ever interested in getting a birthday cake for me, because every year my family never knows what kind of cake I like. <laughs> And my favorite kirsch in the entire world is Schwarzwald Kirschtorte, Black okay. Forest Cherry Cake. So much pass. I'm going to start kind of how I did with Paveglia, which is giving you a little insight on the location itself. Located in the southwest uplands of Germany, the Black Forest, or Schwarzwald, as it's called in German, 
is located in the state of Baden-Württemberg. If you look for it on a map of Germany, the region where the forest lies is a roughly oblong shape. Okay. And it spans roughly 99 miles in length and 33 miles in width. It's a big forest. Yeah, it's pretty large. Yeah. It is literally a fairy tale forest in every regard possible. Well, there's a lot of reasons that people go and film in that particular forest as well. Exactly. It has mountains, foothills, rivers, valleys, and lakes. Some parts of it are so densely wooded, and other parts of it are completely open. It makes perfect sense that the Black Forest was actually the setting for many of the Brothers Grimm stories. Of course. So... (laughs) My heart! So one of the things that I think is really fun about the Black Forest is that the temperature and the precipitation throughout it differ in not only different parts of the forest, but are very different in the forest than they are throughout the rest of Germany. It has its own kind of unique atmosphere. So there's a complete ecosystem in the Black Forest. Correct. And especially depending on what part of it you're in, because people that have mapped it out and do a lot of research on it and conservationists, they've broken it down into different sectors and areas. And those areas have their own even within the forest, unique type of precipitation. I can't say fully whether it is or not, but there's there's a lot of intrigue. There's a lot of mystery there. Okay. And that's what I love about it, because I love a magical haunted forest. Because <laughs> ah! who's mad at that? You can find all of the typical animals and insects that you'd expect from a forest in that particular part of Europe. But the Black Forest is also home to a rare breed of Hinterwald cattle. It's home to Black Forest horses. I was hoping that you were going to say spiders. Oh, no. You know how I feel about spiders. But I was really excited about spiders. Uh, But giant earthworms. Which I also like. And... Wood grouse, or heathercocks, as they're sometimes called, which is the largest in the grouse family. No kidding. (laughs) Which I learned today. Okay. How long are they? Do you know? I don't know how big they are. The Black Forest is mostly rural. It has a lot of small, scattered villages throughout it, and a few large towns. And it's well known for its traditional German farmhouses, cuckoo clocks, and Black Forest gnomes. Oh, oh no. I love a good gnome. <laughs> Wait, but are they gnome gnomes or are they the the ones that you put in your yard? I feel like they're, they hearken to the lawn gnomes. I feel like that's what I picture when I think okay. of gnomes. Okay. <laughs> gnomes apparently in this regard are supposed to actually be really cool and not shady like fairies. And I just kind of love it. In the more densely wooded parts of the forest, the canopy is so thick that hardly any sunlight peeks through. Right. Which to me... And because we're talking about a supernatural forest, it makes me think of the Aokigahara in Japan, where they say that parts of it are so densely canopied that sunlight doesn't come through. There have long been legends and tales about the forest, some of which include a headless horseman on a white steed. Rad. Friendly dwarves. Okay. Lurking werewolves. Okay. Okay. And a king who kidnaps women to bring to his underwater lair where he lives among the nymphs. Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. So obviously werewolves. I'm going to touch base on that. Okay. There's so many different stories surrounding the Black Forest that it's, it's interesting because where do they all come from? Right. Oh, and I love this. So one of the more terrifying stories about the Black Forest is the legend of Der Grossmann, which literally translates to the tall man or the big man. So it's it's you, the tall man. It's basically me. <laughs> He's described as a tall, disfigured man with eyes that are pure white. So not you. So not me. <laughs> He's sometimes described as having more than two arms. And as the story goes, he would follow bad children who make the mistake of entering the Black Forest and then chase them until they have either confessed their bad deeds to their parents 
or until he could capture them himself. Also, truly amazing. Truly amazing, right? Seriously. <laughs>